Hi guys, welcome back. This is Sam. Today we are going to talk about five critical areas which you must know in order to be successful in a project. Uh, we have done tons of projects. Uh, I'm the director for Sapsol Technologies. Uh, we do coach candidates to get into the SAP area and we have done tons of projects uh, both in different industry verticals as well as different uh, geographies. Now, I'm going to talk about these five business areas or five project areas, so to speak, which are very critical uh, when you do a live project and every consultant and every organization must be aware of these areas. So number one would be the scoping of the project. The scope, scoping of the project is extremely, extremely important because if the project scope is not defined properly, it can lead to a lot of challenges within the project, just like change management or scope change or even resolution of disputes about what's included and what's not included in the project. So the statement of work that you define or the project charter that you define must clearly state what are the areas or what are the functionalities or processes and sub processes which are in scope and it must also state what are the processes and sub processes which are not in scope as well as customization areas because customization can lead to huge changes uh, in the project and it can delay the project as well as it can increase the scope of the project and cost of the project so that's number one which is scope number two is the requirement gathering in the business blueprint document. They say you build a strong house on a strong foundation. For a project, the strong foundation is the business blueprint document. So when you gather the requirement, both their current processes and the 2B process, what we call it as is and 2B, you need to be aware of all the intricacies that are involved, all the use cases that are involved, all the scenarios that are involved. So. Typically, we will look at the organization structure, which is enterprise structure, which is the company hierarchy starting from the client, the company code, the sales organization, the financial structure uh, or the chart of account and company code, and then the procurement area as well as the warehouse management and plant maintenance area. So that structure along with human resources has to be very well defined and then the processes within those which are taking use cases for example uh, order processing or recruitment or procurement whatever the process may be you must have multiple use cases so that you take care of all the nuances or all the differences that different order types can bring into the picture when you are doing the project and along with that you will also do the sub processes for example in Finance, you might have account receivable, account uh, payable, you might have asset accounting. In sales, you might have the order types, you might have return order management, you might have a third party order management, you might have defective or lay by what we call as rain check items or uh, consignment sales items. So those use cases are very, very important to be taken into account. So scoping. Uh, after scoping, you will do the business blueprinting and the blueprinting, it becomes extremely, extremely important that you document every scenario and every process properly, both in terms of your video flow charts, in terms of narratives and in terms of configuration structure that you're going to configure in the system. So that's number two, which is blueprinting and requirement gathering. Number three would be system design and configuration because system design and configuration basically means you have to look at the structure of company properly and most important you'll have to look at configuring the master data. The master data is the most critical aspect in a project and it can make or break the project. So all most of the integration after the enterprise structure happens with the master data and then it is the document flow, the document types that you're going to generate in the project. Those would be very important. So number three would be configuration and uh, system settings that you do in the project. And it's not just the functional settings, it's also the security and the system admin settings as well as the ABAP or the custom code that settings that you do are what we call as the RICEFW objects. So repos, interface, conversions, enhancements, forms, and workflows. So those would be the third thing I'm going to look at is system 
analysis system design and configuration areas those have to be very robust they have to be very solid because after strong blueprinting they build the foundation as the number three most important area in a project now let's talk about the number four area number four area would be uh, for me would be user acceptance testing and data management so uat uh, you will have to write test scripts for each of those use cases which you built uh, whether it's order type or whether it is a procurement pro, a process or whether it's a return process or whether it's a sales process or a consignment sale process or a third party order, you'll have to write a script and then those testing types have to be fully uh, done properly so that the user is aware of what types of testing he has to do. And final analysis will be the UAT. So you'll have to do the system integration test. You have to do the FIT, which is functional integration test. You'll have to do a positive and negative test. You will have to do regression tests in case of custom codes so that you're not breaking any old code. And then strong uh, test script for the UAT so that the UAT goes through seamlessly and the client signs off the process. That's the most important piece. And that's number four. Number fifth would be preparation for the go live. You need to prepare your landscape, both development queue and production, but at the same time, you need to be aware that there are lots of nuances in terms of patches, in terms of software versions, in terms of security settings, in terms of VPN, in terms of what we call as front end services, which is the Fiori services for both public and private cloud. All of these along with roles and profiles, roles and profiles, which is the persons or the users who are going to use their specific tasks and their specific transactions have to be there. And they have to be aware of all these transactions that are taking place. And that preparation for cut over and go live, both in terms of a dry run, dry run means you'll have to actually go out and try out in a pre-prod server or in a simulated environment saying how uh, we are going to go live. This is very critical in two cases. Number one, in case of a greenfield project where you do not have a system set up in the production and you're going to go live in the production and you are trying to set up with the VPN or the security SSL certifications or uh, KPI, uh, you know, the key performance indicators that you need in terms of performance parameters that's extremely, extremely important. So both the system administrator and the security guys have to be up to speed on this. And along with the preparation of go live, one of the most important aspects is training and change management. So change management is a process where user have to adapt to a new uh, uh, process or a new way of doing business or a new application. And they have to be followed, uh, thoroughly trained and they have to be fully aware of what's going on in the system. And that's the fifth part, and that would be preparation for go live, as well as change management and training of the organization. So there you go, guys. Those are the five things that every organization or every consultant must be aware of for every SAP project. And again, this would be scoping and planning. This would be requirement gathering and blueprinting. It would be system design and configuration. It would be data management, user acceptance test, and in final analysis, it would be go live preparation and change management aspects of it. So those would be the five most critical areas you should look at. And if you do these five areas for every project or for every consultant who's working on a project, he's aware of these five areas, then uh, your project would be much better. It will never be 100% seamless because we have done hundreds of projects in our organization. I've personally done more than 50 projects, both large and small projects in my career. And I can tell from experience that there is nothing called uh, the seamless or, you know, uh, totally trouble-free project. There will always be nuances. There always will be hiccups. There always will be changes. There always will be challenges for these projects. But if you look at these five areas and you take care of these five areas, I'm pretty sure you will have a successful project. And if you do need to ask a question on any challenges that you have faced in the project, please do uh, comment and subscribe to this channel. If you comment and ask me any question, I'll be happy to answer those. I've been answering those in the past and I'll answer those in the future. And also any other topics you'd like me to cover. We will go through some of the configuration like 
uh, core configuration for F financial sales and distribution, material management and human resources in the coming videos. But if you're looking for a career in SAP, please reach out to our uh, consultants who help you make a career in SAP through our email careers at sapsol.com, C-A-R-E-E-R-S at sapsol.com, which is our organization or log into our portal www.hirerig.ai and we'll be happy to guide you through your journey to make a successful transition to the SAP world. So please like, please subscribe so we intimate you whenever we launch these videos. And this is Sam Mall signing off for SAP Career in Depth Job Seekers Pro. Thank you guys and look forward to speak to you again.